it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Perfectly Wicked Jump for Joy and a Bug Deal. So I've stamped my images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I recently did a similar card to this one using the little pup from Joy to All and I thought it would be fun to do a kitty version for all of you cat lovers out there. So I've stamped out these three cats from Perfectly Wicked but we're going to be making a fall card rather than a Halloween one. So I used T0 and T1 to add some shading to this first little cat, the center one. And then I'm going to come in with T3, T5, and T7 and add some fun little patches. One of the things that I love most about coloring cats and dogs is that there's just so many varieties and different ways to color them. So it's nice to just have fun with it and kind of see where the coloring takes you. So I'm taking that T7 and laying in some shadows, giving him a patch down one side of his face and also on his back and on his front leg that's on the far side. I also thought it would be fun to give him a little black tip on his tail rather than a white tip. And then um, I'm blending out with the T5 and then the T3 is going to be my lightest shade. I'm gonna let that fade into the rest of the coloring that I've already done. And then I did decide to give him one more little black spot on the opposite back leg just to kind of balance him out a bit. And then I'm moving on to the kitty on the far right. And for the white parts of him, I'm using W00 and W1. I find it easier to just lay in the white areas and then add the patches over top rather than lay in the patches and then go back and try to blend out those little white areas. So for his patches, I'm starting with E23, E25, and E27. And similar to the previous cat, I'm going to give him a patch coming down one side of his face with these shades, starting with that E27, blending out with the E25, and then the E23 is going to be my lightest. I also wanted him to have a brown tail, so I'm going to use those shades for that part as well. Just putting that shadow on the underside of the tail and blending up toward the top. And then I also wanted to give him like one little patch on his hindquarters with those shades as well. And then I'm going to switch to some different browns. It's a bit more of like a caramely brown. And that is E33, E35, and E37. And with this one, I'm going to give him a patch on the opposite side of his face, also a little patch down his back, and a teeny tiny one on his outstretched front leg there. So just blending all those out, starting with the E37, then using the E35 as the mid-tone, and then the E33 is going to be the lightest shade, and I'll just let that fade into the rest of the white coloring. The third kitty, I wanted to be a golden tabby, so I chose YR20, YR21, and YR23. And for this guy, I wanted him to have some white patches around his eyes and also a little white belly, and I'll do the little ends of his paws are gonna be white as well. So I started with the YR23, laid that in, and then I'm blending that out with the YR21 and I'm being really careful as I come in toward the parts that I know that I want to leave white because I need to have room for that YR20 to kind of make that transition. So I'm going to carefully start to blend around that and kind of sketch out where those little areas are going to go. And I decided to bring that color forward to meet his little nose. So it's almost like a little heart shape on his face. That's the white area. And then I'm just blending that out around his belly and toward the ends of his feet. And then I will grab my colorless blender because I, I felt like the, the, uh, the right eye got a little bit too much color on it. So I just pushed that back a tiny bit with that 
and then I let that dry for about a minute. And then I'm going to come in with YR24 and begin to add his little tiger stripes. So I did three stripes on the top of his head and then much tinier ones on his arms. And I'm going to bring them down his back as well. And I'm just kind of drawing in those little triangles using the very tip of my marker and light pressure and um, just kind of letting those it's just one shade darker than the YR23, so they're not super prominent, but definitely there enough to see them and still look nice and blended. And then I'll take R20 and color in all of their noses and use R20 with R11 to give them all some rosy cheeks. It won't show up as well on the darker kitties, so I did do multiple layers on their patches just to get that to show up a little bit better. And then blending out the edges with that R11. Then I'm moving on to the tree branch. And I wanted some different browns than I've already used. So I chose E55, E57, and E59. I'm starting with the E59 and doing a shadow on the underside of that branch. Just again using a very thin stroke with the tip of my marker. And then I'll begin to blend that out with the E55, still sticking really close to the outer edge, so I'll have plenty of room for a nice highlight, which I will add with that E55. I'm just going to come in, color right over the edge of that E57 so that it softens it up and gets a nice blend, and then fill in the rest of that white space. And then just like I did with the kitty stripes, I'm going to let that dry for about a minute. And then I'm going to come in with my darkest shade, that E59, and start to add a little bit of wood grain texture to it. I thought I might also add some with the E57, but I ended up just using the E59 because I wanted it to be nice and bold. For the leaves, I'm starting out with YR04 and YR07, just adding a bit of YR07 first to many of the leaves, just kind of skipping here and there, and then I'm going to blend that out with the YR04. I wanted to try to recreate a sugar maple leaf. Um, we have a lot of sugar maple leaves near us. I don't personally have one. I would love to add one to my yard, but I don't really have the space to add another large tree, but they are absolutely gorgeous in the fall. I just love them so much. They have these super vibrant, almost neon orange and hot pink looking leaves. They're just stunning. So I wanted to try to recreate that look. I've never tried to do this before with Copics and I didn't even practice it beforehand. So I'm just trying it out right here. And um, I decided that I would add some YR09 to some of these other leaves, just so there was a little bit of variation since they're all going to pretty much look the same, since I really wanted them to look like they were all falling from the same tree. So I added that YR09 to the rest of the leaves, and for those I'm going to blend out with the YR07, so they'll be just a bit darker and brighter. And then I'm going to layer the other colors right over so that they kind of meet the edges of these orange sections. And the colors I'm using for that are RV06 and RV09. I'm starting with the RV09 and once again just kind of going here and there picking certain leaves to start with that darkest shade and then once I'm happy with those I'm going to use the RV06 to blend out and like I said I'm going to go right into the orange area to try to create a transition between the two. It wasn't as easy as I thought it might be since pink and orange are not that far apart on the spectrum, but I just had to work back and forth at it and I'm going to go back to my YR04 and try to bridge the gap with that as well and just blend over those areas a couple times until it looks a little bit more seamless. 
And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to finish the rest of the leaves, starting with the RV06, and I'll add in the RV04 to blend those out so they'll be just a little bit lighter, and also add in a bit of that YR04 on any areas that just don't seem to want to blend. So just like with Distress Oxides, you know how you kind of work back and forth between the colors to get the really nice blend. That's what I'm doing here with my Copics since these colors just don't um, seamlessly blend on their own. And in the final look, the leaves are going to be very bright, but really they do look like sugar maple. Sugar maple's leaves, like I said, it's almost like a neon orangey hot pink it's bam in your face it's they're just gorgeous but because they are so bright and because they're all basically the same colors I didn't want it to look like just one big blob so I'm going to add in some detail to these leaves just to make them each a little bit more distinct so I'm going to grab the R39 for that and Again, using the very tip of that marker and super light pressure, I'm just going to draw in some veining on each of the leaves, starting at the bottom of it and going toward the top, or sometimes I start at the top and go toward the bottom. Either way, whatever was easiest, depending on how the leaves were turned in that pile. And then just adding a few little um, veins coming out from that area so that they just have a little bit more... Um, uniqueness to them so they all kind of stand out. And I'll trim everything out with the matching dies. For my background, I've taken the largest of the small stitch rectangle stackables and die cut that out of a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. Then I'm going to take the cloudy stencil and use that to blend on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and create a nice blue sky. So I'm pressing down pretty hard with that mini ink blending tool as I leave the stencil and then lifting up as I come off of it so that I get a nice hazy look and um, it's just more concentrated right at the edge of that cloud, gives them a lot more definition and then it just gets nice and dreamy as you go up away from that towards the next cloud or towards the top of the panel. So I'm going to continue to turn that stencil so I get a different cloud formation. And I'll do one more of those because I'm not quite sure how far up my grass border is going to go. So I just did one more on that so that I know that um, that will be covered at the bottom. And then for the grass, I die cut that with one of the simple stitched hillside borders. It's another piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to blend on some Distress Oxide starting with Twisted Citron. I'm going to cover the entire panel with that. And then to add a bit of definition to the top edge, I'm going to bring in some Mowed Lawn. I'm not going to carry that too far down the panel, mainly just at the top edge so that that stitching detail really stands out. I wanted more of that yellow green from the Twisted Citron because this is a fall card, so the grass tends to get a little bit more yellowed at this time of year. So I went back and forth and then I added some water to my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. I picked out one that is more of a true gold and I'm going to do some splatter detail on both of these panels. I also decided off screen to do some splatter detail with the Distress Oxides uh, and then I let that dry and then I popped my grassy border into my Misty. I'm going to stamp my sentiment in Lawn Fawn Noble Fur Ink and I'm using the one from Jump for Joy that says so thankful that we're friends and I did stamp that down twice to make sure that I had a really nice impression because I am stamping on Distress Oxides and sometimes it's a little bit difficult um, for that not to go cloudy, but I got lucky. And then I'm going to use some mermaid cardstock to stamp on the inside, and I'm using some images and a sentiment from the Meow You Doing stamp set. 
and stamping that in peacock ink. So I'm just using my Twiddler's Nook pressure pal to make sure that I get a really even pressure on that stamping. And then I'm going to use some pattern papers from the Sweater Weather Remix 6x6. And I knew I wanted this print here that has the little patchwork um, pieces. It has a bit of that pink and a bit of that orange in the background and also the gray that I used on one of the kitties. And then I also took that maroon print that I used on the dog version of this card because I wanted them to kind of tie in together and I just liked that it fit very well with this print. But instead of going in the horizontal with the magenta print, I'm going to go in the vertical position for this card. So I added that quilt looking print to the background. I die cut those with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables and then layered those on top of the card using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Then I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel and I'm peeling off those release papers, making sure that that is centered on the card and then I'll press that down. And then I'll take the grassy border and glue that down right over top. I'm just making sure that that is on there nice and straight because that glue does dry very quickly. And then I'll bring in my images and begin to stage my little scene. I wanted this leaf pile to be kind of in the center of the card, but I also wanted this little kitty to sit next to it. And so I needed to move the leaf pile over toward the left a little bit. So I decided to center it above the word thankful. So it still visually looks centered over something on the card. And then I added that little calico kitty over on the right. Then I'm going to take the tree branch and add that toward the top third of my scene. Just making sure that that is pressed down nicely. And then I'll grab my Cutter B scissors and trim off the little excess bit there so it's flush with the edge of the scene. And then I'll take my little yellow golden tiger kitty and I'm going to have him popping up out of the leaves. Um, I thought maybe I should adjust that tree branch a little bit higher, but it was already glued permanently down. There was no removing it. So I just decided to go with it. Um, I needed room at the top anyway for this little cat to be kind of walking across that branch and sending some of the leaves um, falling down into the pile. So that's my idea was that he was kind of like up there um, shaking the tree branch a little bit with his body weight so that the leaves were coming down so they could put them into this little pile. So I'm going to add a couple of leaves to the ends of the main branch and then also the top branch. I'm not going to bother with the one that goes behind the cat since you wouldn't be able to see the leaves that were hanging there hardly at all. So I'm going to take one of them and add that to fill in some of the space over on the left hand side. And then the last one I had always planned to put it over on the right. Then I thought about possibly putting it in one of the kitty's paws. But I really thought that the area down at the grass after the word thankful was just looking blank. It needed something. So I ended up deciding to put it down there. It adds a little pop of color, pulls your eye down toward the sentiment. And I think that finishes that little scene up nicely. So I'm going to take the little swirl mark from a bug deal. I'm going to just selectively stamp part of it because it was too long for the area I needed it for and add that next to the falling leaf. And then um, the leaf was just a little bit too close to it. So I was able to peel that up and slide it over slightly. And as a final embellishment, I wanted to finish up this card in a similar way to how I did on the dog version. So I'm going to use the same platinum stickles and I'm just using the tiniest bit, squeezing that out and then using the nozzle to spread that around on the leaves. I didn't want to cover up too much of the veining detail that I had added. So that's why I just 
chose to use just the tiniest bit of that platinum stickles. If there's just a little bit of gold leaf on the edges of those fall leaves, which is the same how I did it on the dog version. Once that's done, I will pick up that card so you can see all of the detail and see how the stickles and that gold splatter detail really catches in the light. And then there is another look at the inside of the card. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know, are you a dog person or a cat person? I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you want to stick around and keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.